Yes. You are all wrong about PlayStation 5 Pro. The, the media storm on the consumer side of all of us, you know, talking heads and gamers uh, around the PS5 Pro has been extremely interesting to me because um, for the most part, gamers tend to be unified in their response to a certain situation uh, if the rallying cry is uh, something like, uh, you know, evil, greedy gaming corporations are taking advantage of the uh, altruistic, you know, user and user gamer that just wants good games for good prices without ideology. And almost invariably, I fall in line with that same kind of ethic where, you know, if you look at a game like Concord or Skull and Bones or, uh, you know, just... Suicide Squad kills the Justice League, one of these many games that have come out and just been abject failures largely because they can be shown to be, you know, made by committee, corporate soulless cash grab games. And so all of us gamers rally around the idea that we feel legitimately, um, you know, these aren't good games because <laughs> they're not. Uh, and, and the, um, and by rally, I just mean share our opinions openly um, to whatever degree they resonate is, is something out of the control of the individual, I suppose. Uh, and they and those games fail, uh, you know, largely because they can't captivate an audience. So similarly with the PS5 Pro release uh, announcement that just happened recently, every single channel that I have gone to, and these people that I respect, they're, they're similar age brackets. I'm 38. I'm on the older side of kind of the millennials, but um, down to even, you know, not maybe older Gen Zs, but like, you know, 30 somethings, early 30s, late 20s, even a lot of these creators um, in the gaming space have exactly the same opinion about the PS5. It's way too much, $700. It's uh, only moderately... Um, you know, improving upon the PS5 itself, uh, slightly more CPU, slightly more GPU, you know, and then ray tracing. And the idea being that it can offer both performance and uh, quality mode simultaneously. Um, no real new games to speak of, not a huge value add, no new tech, no big, you know, jump in compatibility with the PSVR 2 or something like this. Um, and so invariably, gamers are saying the same exact thing. F Sony, they're just trying to take advantage of the, the, the players. There's no real value add here. Uh, you know, it's not offering many more uh, frames, which is what three quarters of the users choose over pixels. Here's why everybody's wrong. It's going to sell well. A lot of the people that are, you know, bitching about it and talking shit about the PS5 Pro are going to buy it anyway, <laughs> frankly. It offers a moderate improvement in quality the same way that you might say Series X does over the Series S. The Series S is like, I don't know what the relative sales numbers are, but the X is the better system in my opinion. I have the X. A lot of the game development for the X has been hamstrung by the existence of the S. So lots of people are going to buy it that saying there there aren't they aren't because they're falling in line with the fuck Sony narrative. Seven hundred dollars is a lot of money. Here's why that falls on its face. Our purchasing power is so much weaker now than it used to be. If you look at the prices of systems adjusted for inflation, uh, I bet you seven hundred dollars for a new system is not even on the high end. I bet it would be middle of the road. Now, do I wish it was cheaper? Obviously, yes. I don't even have a PS5, so I'm actually considering getting a PS5 Pro. Uh, so for me, it's really a $200 Delta, you know, that I have to consider versus just getting a PS5. Now there's a couple other critiques. There's no disc drive. I'll tell you, I would love to say that I, uh, have a ton of physical media that, uh, I'm not going to let the evil corporations take away my ability to own my game forever. You know, I, I'd love to say that I have even tried to start accumulating more physical media. I literally have, I think, four physical Xbox discs. Uh, I have like the skiing one, uh, Ace Combat 6, I think it is, 
and I just bought Dragon's Dogma 2. I even got the steel book because I'm going to make this a thing. I'm going to start getting physical copies. It's so much easier to digitally download a copy. I have to go to the local GameStop, see if they have the friggin' disc, and I get it. I have GameStop stock. I love having a local game store. If only in, in, in concept. I've gone to GameStop my whole life. It's just not the same. They don't have the demos, you know, up the way they used to when I was a kid. We'd go in there and play games, you know. Um, everything's going digital. Like, I get that the ethic of being able to control our physical media is a powerful one and one that, you know, is something to believe in. But, I mean, you know, everything's in the cloud. We're moving to a digital future whether we want to or not. Um so, yeah, I don't think that the lack of a disk drive in the PS5 is a big deal. Now, part of that is because I have an Xbox Series X, not a, not S, and so I do have something to play my, you know, games on and Blu-rays on. If I didn't, I would I would feel differently. But I think a lot of people already have an ability to play discs. Just because I think you check that box if you're a gamer, whether you have a PC that can play them or you already have a PS5 or you have an Xbox Series X, right? You don't need more than one disk drive, really. Um, you know, I don't even have a disk drive on the computer that I'm making this on. I have a mini, um, what the hell is it called? A, a, I want to say MacBook, but it's not. A, a M2 Mac Mini Pro, M2 Pro Mac Mini. Um, it's great. The value proposition of it was great. I can make videos. I can play some kind of little games. I've, I've played uh, Divinity Original Sin. I haven't beat it yet, though. Played Baldur's Gate 3 first and then got, got Divinity Original Sin. Um, you know, I do all my web browsing, do my work, you know, my emails and stuff. And I'm trying to, you know, upload more videos. And I do that all on this uh, Mac Mini. No disk drive, you know. So I think the critiques about the PS5 are unfounded. And I think that they will be... Um, you know, I think that my thesis here will be vindicated when the sales start happening. Do I think it'll be the best selling console of all time? Probably not. You know, like probably not. Like uh, Asmongold always says PS2 best console of all time. I had a PS2. I loved having the PS2. It was a huge cultural thing. It was the first thing to have like a DVD player, if, if memory serves. Uh, you know, and you could play all these kick, kick ass games and the, the, the library was crazy. But the N64, I think, was the biggest cultural change uh, in a system. Uh, and that could be nostalgic because I got that when I was a kid for Christmas and it was just super epic. But my first system was the Genesis. But anyway, I think the PS5 Pro will sell respectably, probably 10, 20 plus percent of what Sony sells in a given you know, you know, know, time, quarter, year uh, relative to total, can, you know, um, you know, including the PS5, I bet you it'll sell like at least like a quarter or a fifth as much as the PS5, which is considerable, you know, they'll make money. And, you know, the sad fact uh, is companies are just not making as much because of the way that our, you know, government has been running. It's just, we're just printing money. We're just creating, uh, you know, the liabilities to service the amount of uh, inflationary debt that we're flooding the system with such that the real goods and services are becoming inflated in their price because there's so much more money in the system sloshing around and there's the same goods and services and these huge bureaucratic companies like Sony can't move like uh, a more agile company can. So, you know, you see this in everything. You see Grinding Gear Games doing a better job than Blizzard, you know, which is crazy if you look at their, you know, balance sheets, but they can move faster, they can be more innovative. You see SpaceX doing way better than Boeing and NASA, you know, and uh, they're a private company. But, you know, Sony can't just iterate that much more quickly than kind of the greater uh, bureaucratic wheels will allow in, in, in our, you know, kind of bloated federalized system right now. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of us are getting squeezed. Inflation is hitting us, but those of us that game have enough money to put into the hobby, um, such that we're always looking at what consoles we want to own. A lot of us have gone to the PC route. Uh, I built a PC a long time ago when I was in high school. So like 2002, 2003. Um, but I just watched so much PORN on it that it ended up getting the virus and I, you know, it, it didn't work anymore after a couple of years. 
uh, didn't kind of stick with PC gaming. I'm that classic, you know, Blizz, you know, Diablo four player that has, you know, a wife and two kids and a full time job. So, you know, I want to play a game that I can just enjoy. I just got Space Marine two, and I'm really enjoying it. I'd like to get two buddies so I can actually play through the campaign with with friends. Um, you know, I'm grinding out Final Fantasy ten and trying to get uh, through the sphere grid and, and work through that. Cause that's kind of a nostalgia game for me, but I got a ton of games that I'm enjoying on the Xbox and I think it's great. And I am maybe, uh, you know, in the minority here, but I'm considering getting a PS five pro. Uh, I don't have a PS five. There's been a ton of games that I've missed out from not having this generation uh, with Sony. You know, I want to play bloodborne uh, cause I played Elden ring realized how friggin' Epic from software is went back, played, through beat dark souls one dark souls two dark souls three sekiro remnant one and two jedi fallen order and survivor so just really opened my eyes up to how much i like souls games and yeah i want to play bloodborne i want to play final fantasy 16 i've been looking at this game detroit become human looks super cool um you know i'd like to play god of war uh there's there's uh, some majorly cool games that I've missed out. Shadow of the Colossus, uh, Black Myth Wukong. And so, yeah, I think everybody's wrong about the PS5 Pro. I think it makes sense to shit on Sony. I think it's healthy for, you know, the gamers, if you will, to pressure the companies into offering a larger value proposition. I think that's all good. I just think that we're off the mark in uh, reflecting boots on the ground reality for the company because the company has to respond to the balance sheet at the end of the day. And I know that incentives in the corporate world have been skewed by the kind of stakeholder capitalism that we have in terms of the investment company's motives. So you're getting games like Concord because even though, and and they thought that it would sell well, but even though it doesn't sell well, it, it more fully panders to uh, and is guided by the ethic of the investment uh, than the want of the open market. And hopefully that can't persist forever and the market will, you know, make things change for the better because gamer, we're very simple gamers, you know, we want sexy chicks, big, you know, capable, you know, macho dudes, Conan the Barbarian, and we want to go on epic adventures with good stories, with well-written intrigue and drama, you know, and some of us like platforming, some of us like first person shooting, some of us like puzzle games, some of us like strategy, what have you. But th- that's kind of noise next to the fact that we have a very clear ethic and investment has a very different ethic. So BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street are not interested in the hero's journey as you know Joseph Campbell would relate it. They're interested in being seen as the kind of new world order, progressive political elite, you know, uh, pushing society forward to the kind of, you know, unicornia utopia uh, of, you know, the perfected human. It's all nonsense, but that's what these people believe. They they want to have their kind of holier than thou social views uh, pushed through popular culture and, and by extension gaming. And, you know, it falls on its face every single time. We've seen it again and again, but uh, it, it, it somehow still holds sway for big companies uh, because, you know, that's who, you know, butters their bread on the, on the, on the, you know, front end, but on the back end, if they can't sell the product, you know, they just got to start taking tax write-offs and stuff, which they did with Willow, which they did with Concord, you know, they had to shit can at the acolyte. Like this is not a, uh, you know, mystery, right? So yeah, I think PS5 pro, is going to sell. I'm considering getting one. Uh, it may not be a big step up, but you know, it seems like consumer electronics are plateauing right now because what, where are we going to go from here? Um, you know, Murphy's law and, you know, microprocessors can only get so much better. I mean, what do I know? But it just seems like, you know, VR and, uh, how would you say immersion are some of the few places that can still take giant leaps but in terms of frame rate resolution quality of games these are things that are no longer just um uh reliably improving linearly each year 
uh, in a lot of cases, we're going backwards. So um, I appreciate a company trying to iterate on their flagship product. I don't begrudge them for trying to make money on it. They can't give it away for free unless they're trying to make you the product. You know, Game Pass is hard to stay away from. I, I downloaded Decor from Ultimate and I lose access to a lot of games, but I'm trying to get that like, I want to have physical games ethic like we were talking about earlier. And the best I can do is just have my games be owned as opposed to rented the way that Game Pass is. But do you see the value of that is so great? Uh, it's hard to pass up, you know? So I think that we can kick and scream against uh, companies do, doing what they're going to do if it is possible as much as we, if it is profitable as much as we want. But to the degree to which the free market speaks, I think we're all just kidding ourselves by going against it the same way that Disney's kick, kicking itself by going against it by continuing to release, you know, Kathleen Kennedy signed off on crap. So who knows? I could totally be wrong. Maybe the PS5 Pro sells nothing, but I bet you it sells really well and shows that as much as we're pissed off by the way that we are, you know, seemingly being taken advantage of by companies like Sony, products like Concord fail for a reason. And I don't think Sony PlayStation 5 Pro will fail. I think it will do just fine. And it'll be a way for people like myself who don't have a PlayStation to get into the ecosystem and feel like, all right, we're, we're, we're doing you know good. We're enjoying the games that we missed out on even a little bit better than we might have otherwise. And the enthusiasts will get it. And it may even kind of revivify the secondary market for the PS5. Because of course, if the people that have a PS5 upgraded to the PS5 Pro, they're going to sell their PS5. I think that's what a lot of people aren't realizing. It's like, Oh, if you already have a PS5 Pro, why would you get a PlayStation 5? Or if you already have a PlayStation, why would you get a PS5 Pro for $700? But that's not the calculus. You'd clearly sell the PS5 and then get the PS5 Pro. So if you're lucky, you can get $400, $350 for the PS5, and then you're only spending you know, $350 on the PS5 Pro. So yeah, I think everybody's wrong about the PS5 Pro. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys. Love you. See you next time.